Hello and welcome. My name is Brad Williams. I'm the Vice President of Government Relations at the Detroit Regional Chamber and I'm here today with our President and CEO, Sandy Barua. Uh, we are hopefully uh, winding down or at least beginning to lift uh, the governor's stay home, stay, stay safe order. And we wanted to provide employers with a clear picture of uh, employees comfort and returning to work and how they're viewing this order. So the chamber, we recently conducted a statewide poll of registered voters to show uh, their reaction to the dual health uh, uh, crisis and the economic crisis. So Sandy, we all know the state is facing the unenviable task of trying to reopen safely, but at a speed that mitigates uh, the economic damage. So we're gonna talk a little bit about what this uh, poll tells us. So Sandy, thanks for being here. I hope you're safe and I hope you're doing, doing well at home. Uh, these last two, two and a half months. Yeah, thanks, Brad. Uh, the poll is uh, really interesting. We're all safe. Hope all everyone listening is safe as well, but we have a lot to talk about with uh, the findings in this poll. So Sandy, let's dig a little bit deeper into what this poll tells us. There, there's no doubt that uh, the COVID-19 crisis has taken a huge toll on Michiganders. Uh, what does the poll tell us about the economic pain we're experiencing and, and how people are feeling? Yeah, yeah, Brad. Yeah, as as we all know, this crisis is is real. Uh, it is deep, and it and it is unprecedented. Um, and a lot of Michiganders, a lot of our friends and neighbors are hurting. Uh, one of the more shocking numbers out of this is that 16% of our uh, Michigan neighbors are concerned about putting food on the table, and that's a shocking number to find uh, in the United States of America in in in, in 2020. Um, the good news, if you can kind of consider it good news, is that uh, the 16% number is 10% better than what we found in our April poll, uh, which the result there was 26% uh, of Michiganders responded that they were concerned about putting food on the table. So this might have to do with people having a better sense of how they're able to cope with the crisis. Uh, there's a little less uncertainty now because now that we've been at the stay at home order for a while and things are beginning to ease. So some people may have been called back to work, which is obviously a, a great thing. Uh, or uh, these uh, unemployment benefits, which have been enhanced by the federal government uh, maybe those benefits have kicked in and have eased people's uh, anxiety about being able to feed themselves and their family. So people are beginning to adjust to a, a pretty bad situation. Yeah, so food security is obviously the most, most critical, but how are people feeling about the rest of their financial situation? Yeah, uh, I, I don't know anyone who feels really great about their financial situation uh, right now because of all the uncertainty and even those uh, people who are un unemployed or am still employed, excuse me, uh, have taken pay cuts. I mean, certainly, you know, that's something that we've implemented here at the Detroit Regional Chamber uh, just to help get us through the crisis. But generally, the impact of the economic shutdown is unprecedented across the state. 24% you know, almost a quarter, 24% uh, report that the impact on their household finances have, has been catastrophic or major. Neither one of those are good terms. <laughs> you know, 24% are saying, hey, the impact on my household has been catastrophic or major. Uh, now, again, the good news, if we can call it that again, uh, is that this is down from what we found in April, where 47%, almost half of the respondents, said that this crisis uh, had a catastrophic or major impact on their household finances. So, you know, that is just a huge, uh, a huge number um, uh, that we still have. It's less than what it was, uh, but clearly uh, the economic damage that's being created both in households and in businesses and obviously at the state level in terms of the state budget um, is, is dramatic and it's gonna take us a while to recover in all three of these sectors. Yeah, Sandy, you know, this is the second time, as you mentioned, that we've uh, done a poll since the COVID crisis hit. Um, based on the results of our survey last month, uh, that led us to predict an April unemployment rate uh, in the mid to upper 20% range. And this week, the official April Michigan unemployment range was announced at 22.7%, so a little bit lower uh, than what we thought based on the data we gathered uh, uh, not too long ago. So what was your reaction to the 22.7% announcement earlier this week? 
So let's recognize that uh, 22 percent, uh, actually almost 23 percent, uh, 22.7, uh, is a historic number, uh, especially considering uh, that we ended uh, the month of February at a near record low. Uh, we haven't seen anything like 23 uh, percent since the Great Depression. Even during the Great Recession a little over a decade ago, we didn't get to anything close uh, to that. So this is a clear indication of the economic damage our economy and our family uh, are experiencing across the state. Uh, I do think that um, our April polling number uh, of uh, back in April demonstrates that the 23% that is the official number is understated. Uh, first of all, the main number that was just announced, the 22.7, really only includes half the month of April. Uh, so it does not include all of the people who have been filing for unemployment the last uh, week and a half, two weeks of April. The other thing is, is that you have to be actively looking for work to be considered unemployed. And a lot of people are looking at the job market right now saying, wow, everyone's losing their job. I'm not going to be looking for work. So that means you're not counted as, as unemployed. And finally, uh, as we all know, uh, the demand on our unemployment system here in Michigan, just like every other state across uh, the nation, is under tremendous strain. So there are people who are still trying to get through uh, the unemployment, uh, the unemployment system. So it is really safe to assume, Brad, that our actual unemployment rate in Michigan is actually higher than the official 22.7 percent uh, just recently announced. Yeah, I know when we saw those numbers come through in April of the survey we did, we all thought uh, at the chamber, those were real gut punch numbers. And I think your your analysis here is probably probably correct. But let's let's look at um, maybe the positive side of this. I think, you know, we've seen, you know, uh, construction is going back, uh, manufacturing is going back, uh, and more and more uh, sectors are starting to go back, uh, you know, seems like every week. So how are workers feeling about returning back to the workplace? Yeah, so there's a couple um, uh, pieces of, of news here, some from our poll and, and some coming from the Michigan Economic Recovery uh, Council. Uh, one, based on the reopenings that have been done uh, up until this date, uh, there's potentially about 80% of the Michigan workforce that is at least eligible to go back to work. That doesn't mean that 80% of our workforce is back. Obviously, that doesn't jive with the unemployment number, but at least we've opened enough of our economy that about 80% is, is at least poised to get back to work. And the good news is, and this is from our poll data, as you know so well, Brad, is that workers are, are really ready to return to work and employers have the confidence of their employees. Employees trust their employer to keep them safe. And here's some numbers to back that up. Uh, our survey uh, of this week shows that 77% trust their employer to keep them safe. That is a hugely impressive number, and it is a 17% increase over this exact same question that we asked in our April poll. So in one month, that number's gone from an impressive 60% to an even more impressive uh, 77%. And 66% of workers feel safe going back to work right now. And now the one thing that's important for employers to uh, really keep in mind is that they are expecting their employers uh, to do certain things to keep them safe. The most popular thing that, or things I should say, that employees are looking for their employers to do is implement six foot distancing rules at work, requiring face masks for employees and customers or vendors that uh, anyone who's basically in that workspace. Temperature checks uh, are critical. And uh, so if the employers need to be clear, they need to be crystal clear to both employees and customers about the steps those employers are taking to ensure the safety of that workplace because neither customers or employ employees are gonna feel safe walking into any kind of establishment unless the employer is clearly clearly communicating, these are the positive steps that we're taking to keep everyone safe here. And Brad, I think one of the things that you and I have talked about uh, that was really interesting in the data and really important 
for employers, especially those uh, in the Metro Detroit area, is that while uh, as a whole, uh, people are across the state are really ready to return to work. African Americans um, have a very different view of this, and that African Americans feel unsafe returning to work by a majority number. About 58% said, I don't feel safe returning to work. And that's a pretty solid majority number. So employers really need to, you know, uh, keep that in mind and certainly be sensitive to that uh, because there is a big demographic of our, uh, of our friends and colleagues and neighbors here in Michigan that have not raised their hand to say that, hey, I'm really ready to return to work. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, there's there, there's certainly a, a majority uh, across the state that do feel ready, but there's a there's a significant uh, minority as well, uh, and it's going to be a challenge for employers. But you know, while there is a majority uh, that's ready to return to work, does that mean uh, when the stay at home order is lifted uh, that we're going to see people flooding into the streets uh, and ready to party? Yeah, so that's uh, that's uh, that's a really great question and, and an interesting one. Obviously, we're we're recording this uh, as uh, the governor just opened up Northern Michigan right before Memorial Day weekend, and we are seeing kind of a, a spike of activity there. But generally, the numbers uh, of people statewide uh, say that hey, I'm willing to go back to work. I'm not willing to really engage in the rest of the economic activity that I used to engage in. They are certainly less anxious to engage in activities that they used to. Uh, so it's very clear that it's going to take wa a while for people to feel comfortable uh, going back. Um, so, you know, some numbers to kind of back that up. You know, first, 72% uh, uh, of respondents uh, support reopening our economy gradually to avoid a second wave of the virus. Uh, and that's important. So this is an area where uh, there is a vocal minority saying, hey, let's open up really quickly. Uh, but a, a vast majority, a strong majority are saying, well, let's take it, let, let's take this methodically. Let's take this slowly. Another number, 56% of our fellow Michiganders are more concerned about their health situation than they are about their financial situation. So again, 56%, a pretty good solid majority say, listen, I'm concerned about both, you know, certainly finances and health, but I'm more concerned about health and finances. Another sign that people aren't so anxious to get back to doing things as normal. And there's some other additional data. People are willing to engage in what I consider to be smaller scale activities. Things like going to the grocery store, going to their doctor's office, or having a small social gathering of roughly 10 people or less. The, the data shows they are very hesitant to do things like going to a restaurant, uh, going to a sports venue, or frankly, even, even a, school, uh, a school setting. And, you know, and Brad, you know, one of the responsibilities that you and I have is to communicate to the employers that we serve at the Detroit Regional Chamber is that, you as a business owner, as a business manager, have a huge responsibility here. You know, our businesses have to ensure that they are close partners with governments and the citizens to continue to guard our public health. Because if there are a few bad actors out there and they skirt the rules, like with the social distancing rules or, you know, uh, requiring face masks or not doing the proper uh, cleaning and disinfecting uh, and people get sick, you know, then we may have to engage in another lockdown, which would be hugely damaging. And we don't want a handful of bad actors uh, to make it a, a bad situation for all the businesses, the vast, vast, vast majority of businesses that are going to do things right. Because until there's a vaccine, uh, people are saying, hey, you know, I'm not willing to engage in a lot of stuff. And if there's another spike somewhere, I'm going to go back to home, even if I'm being told to or not. Yeah, I, I love my family, but I don't know if I can do this again, Sandy. Um, <laughs> well, we can switch homes, Brad. Well, that, that's maybe that's not a bad idea. Maybe maybe yeah. you I'll can quarantine at your place and quarantine at my you. place. Yeah, that that might be nice. Um, you know, you and I both uh, have gotten to know the governor quite well uh, recently, and I can't imagine uh, the amount of stress uh, that's been placed on her and her team's shoulders, but. How do Michiganders feel about uh, the governor's uh, phased approach to reopening the economy? 
Yeah, I, you're right. I mean, you know, uh, the, the governor, uh, we, we become good friends uh, with her. Uh, and what I, I just really uh, understand and support the position that an, a chief executive is in. Uh, you know, I worked for two presidents uh, before I came to Michigan. And at the end of the day, a governor or a president uh, has the final responsibility. So it's easy for those of us who are sitting uh, kind of in the cheap seats, uh, who don't have to make the final decision where lives are at stake, uh, to criticize. So that's one of the reasons why we at the chamber have have not criticized decisions of the governor, even when uh, we may have taken a, a different path. But uh, the data shows from the polling that uh, Brad, you and uh, that we've engaged in, shows that she's in a really strong position, and she's in a really strong position statewide. It is not region by region. She's got strong support across the state uh, in her handling of the crisis. Her support is at 64 uh, percent, which is strong by just about any standard in today's political environment. And this actually. Uh, demonstrates an increase over the April polling when we were kind of newly in this crisis where she was uh, ranked at 57 percent in job approval regarding her handling of COVID-19. So she's kind of on an, on an upward swing. Secondly, not only is her support for the governor, their support for the governor's approach to the crisis. 59 percent, another strong majority, agreed that the state is opening up at about the right speed with an additional 7% saying, hey, whoa, wait a minute, we're actually moving too fast. You combine those two, that's 66% of all Michiganders are saying we're opening up just about right, or in fact, maybe even too fast. So again, that's a really strong indication that uh, the state is kind of behind the governor's methodical approach. And I know many business owners are anxious to open up sooner rather than later and Lord knows, uh, you know, we at the chamber are very sympathetic to that. Uh, but it's important that employers understand what their employees and their customers might be thinking and feeling. And this is why we did this poll. It's not to validate a, any political uh, uh, person or any political approach or how we're approaching the crisis in Michigan versus other states. We wanted Michigan employers to understand what their customers and what their employees are thinking uh, and feeling because, you know, we want businesses to be successful, which is why we do these kinds of polls or other kinds of polls is because the more businesses know about the environment in which they're operating, the more successful they're going to be. Yeah, that's uh, exactly exactly the point, Sandy, and that's why we we don't get into questions like who are you going to vote for for president, for example. Those are those are interesting data points, but there are other people who 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 can ask those types of questions. Our goal is to help businesses succeed, and ultimately, you know, who they're going to vote for for president doesn't doesn't make a difference there. So, thank you, Sandy, for for well, we taking. We might ask that time. question, Brad, when you run for president. Then then, then we'll ask the question. You know, Brad Williams for president. Oh, oh, the vetting, the vetting for that candidacy would take just far too long. I think uh, I, I don't think anyone wants that. Uh, but thank you, Sandy, and and thank you for those who tuned in. You know, we just scratched the surface of what's available here uh, for for employers uh, and for the general public. So I encourage you to go to the chamber website and the chamber data data center at DetroitChamber.com. Uh, there is so much interesting information here. Uh, that is going to be helpful to you and helpful to your business. Uh, and, and I just encourage you to go look at that. Uh, and we'll look forward to talking to you again soon. Thanks, Brad.